to become who we want to be as individuals. And at the end of the day, that's going to help us be a successful offense. And a man, one-on-one -on -one coverage because the safety rolls to Jefferson's side. Jordan Love hit me up the night of the draft. You know, just congratulating me, letting me know it's time to work. Um, AJ Dillon was open arms. Von Rock caught a ball with his thighs. We didn't yeah. talk about that. It was more of with his ass. If he throws a good ball, this is a running, catching touchdown untied. Right. Like, KP does like these flips after every win. And I'm like just waiting for him to do his flip. You know that we still love each other? That's what football brings us. Across the safety space. Yeah. So you can tune in anywhere that you guys follow us on social media. Welcome to the Practice Squad podcast. I clicked the wrong lead-in intro and switched off of it. How are we doing today? We are past free agency. <laughs> we are... <laughs> that might be one of Local. the worst ones I've ever had. That was so bad. All right. We are past free agency. We are now headed towards the draft. March Madness, what, for this episode would have started yesterday at this point. So that is well underway. Lots of good stuff to talk about in the sports world. And my co-host, Mark Petrito, has taken the time to review film from all of the top wide receivers in this draft class. And that's what we're breaking down today. Mark, how are we doing today? Ready to, ready to get in the nitty gritty of the receivers, man. Um, one of the most fun positions to break down because there's so many different aspects to look at. Uh, you know, it's, it's such an athletic position, such a raw talent position. A lot of it's what God gives you, but there's so much skill and training and technique and attention to detail that separates these guys from being just really freaky athletic dudes that'll make some plays to the guys that make the play almost every time and are just matchup nightmares. And in this year's class, the more I watched, the more impressed I got because I, at first I really just thought there was a couple guys to look out for, but there's definitely much more than that in this class. And the NFL, in terms of receiver, is going to be in good hands, no pun intended, for quite a while. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think both – you know, wide receiver and offensive line. We've had conversations about this, like two deepest classes in, in recent memory for, for those two respective positions. Um, definitely as long as uh, you and I have been put, paying close attention to the draft. Um, but like truly this receiver class is special. Um, I'm a lineman. I don't have the greatest eye for it. And even I know that. And I think uh, there's a lot of guys that, you know, might fall later in the first round, second round, that would be, you know, early day one picks, I think, in a lot of other uh, draft class years. So um, excited to get into it. And Mark, I don't, I'll kind of let you take the reins here. I pretty much went by pers like, you know, where they're currently projected to be to be drafted as far as the order of the film breakdown. Uh, if that works for you. Um, that's kind of the order we're going to rock in. Starting with, surprise, surprise, Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, so Marvin Marv Roddy Marv. put together a pretty solid uh, compilation of his film here. We can talk about that. Um, yeah, Mark, I'll let you uh, take the reins here. Yeah, so, I mean, before I get into Marvin, who a lot of people have as the top prospect, um, I want to say the biggest thing, too, with the receiver position in drafting is you can see the direct impact that getting a guy, the right guy can have. Uh, you look at like the Justin Jefferson impact on the Vikings and what that became. Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow's impact on Cincinnati, who they were the worst team in football a few years back. And people forget about that so quickly because they drafted the right quarterback and the right receiver. Um, even as far as last year, you look at guys like the Chargers drafted the wrong guy. And look how that happened, right? Look how that right. worked out for them. But then the Ravens drafted a better fit in Zay Flowers in an immediate impact that you know was a later pick because he, for whatever reason – they got pushed back in the draft. So, um, you know, the receiver position can change teams. It can transform your offense identity. And Marvin Harrison Jr., when we get back to this first guy we're going to talk about, he transforms a franchise. The, the hype is real. The name, obviously, people know Marvin Harrison. His dad was a Hall of Fame, one of the best receivers we've ever seen play the game. But Marvin Harrison Jr. provides a lot of the same things his dad had, but a little bit different, right? He's a little bit bigger. I think he's a little bit – his top-end speed is faster than his father was. Um, this guy's got strong hands. He, he really does check every box when you look at it. And you can talk about being overhyped or whatever you want. I do think he's a little bit overhyped, but the hype is not fake. 
It's warranted. It's deserved. This guy's going to be a solid NFL player for 10 plus years, barring any crazy injuries. Um, he's the real deal. Uh, the first thing you want to look at in this first clip is obviously you see his speed at the point of release. And then it's the catch that stands out to me. This guy's actually in very good position in coverage. It's a hard thing to cover this guy one-on-one, -on -one, right? For anybody, I don't care who it is. It's a hard ask. He, he plays pretty good in transition. He's right there on the shoulder that he needs to be on. Quarterback gives his guy a chance. And, I, and when I, you hear guys say 50-50 balls. When it's a Marvin Harrison Jr., it's not a 50-50 incompletion catch. It's 80-20, 75-25. Because if it touches his hands, he's going to bring it down more than 75% of the time. And it doesn't matter how good the coverage is. It doesn't matter if you get your hand on the ball. He's got strong hands. He's a natural pass catcher. He can get open off the press. He can get open against zone and off coverage. He can outrun you. He can beat you in and out of breaks. Uh, but that first one is just shows you body control, balance. He gets his feet in, um, and he's got strong hands at the point of, at the point of the catch. But when he, when I mentioned speed, the second clip, this is why I put the second clip in here. Okay, um, he hit 21 miles per hour here on this clip we're about to show you, which he did twice in this season. All right, and you'll see the effect it has on defenders. Holy they have crap. Two guys, <laughs> they have two guys that are responsible to take him out of the play. The safety is supposed to take him out of the play. The corner is supposed to take him out of the play. The safety is supposed to be able to help the corner. Um, both of them think that they have some security because they're playing eight yards off. So normally when you play eight yards off, you have a little bit of security to get in a backpedal later, and you can be more aggressive and shorter stuff. But what you don't know how to prepare for, no matter how much film you watch, is how fast 21 miles per hour is on a human being. Bro, shout out to that ref, too. He's, he's freaking hauling there. You see that? Yeah. That, this ref could play safety. Look at this guy. <laughs> yeah, he's running with Marv. Maybe get him a contract. For real. Um, no, but, this is insane, know, though. Like, it's I mean, insane, man. He he takes the top off the defense right away, um, and the guy just floats, man. He he's got stride. He 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 flies when he gets going. Um, I think the biggest thing too is like a the right from his starting receiver stance into how fast he gets. Like he gets to his top speed really really quickly. You think that you have space to backpedal he eats up that space so quick off the snap of the ball and that's what scares that's defenders ridiculous. that's what the, and because he can do this it allows him to be better in out of his breaks because you have to respect the, the threat of him going deep on a on a go ball or a post and in this instance he just runs by two guys and it doesn't get easier for a quarterback than just hey i'm gonna throw it to the fastest dude who just ran by everybody it's insane this is another really good example of a combination of his release package and then his catch, his high pointing of the ball and his neutral coverage catching ability. So the release move doesn't really work the way he wants it to, actually. It's a great release, but the defender doesn't bite too hard. He actually recovers really well and is in good position. Quarterback throws it up to him, and, and he goes and gets it. The best receivers have all of these things combined into one toolbox. He's got them all. He goes and gets it and attacks the ball. The very most confident handed receivers do that. They don't wait for it to come down. They go get it. And that's just yeah. an excellent, that's just an excellent go up and moss the defender guy. Cause the release didn't work the way he planned. He doesn't panic. He still goes and makes the play for six. Um, you know, dude had 31 touchdowns in his career for a reason. I mean, he's a, he's a touchdown machine. I mean, that's ridiculous. Go up and get it, man. Go up and get it. I talk about you know him being him comfortable impressed. and off. Yeah, so this is this is tight press coverage, and the oh, safety no. comes down, uh, playing more of like a whole fox spot. Um, so the corner's left on an island, and you don't want to leave anybody on Marvin Harrison Jr. It's just a bad formula. Um, this is just a great release with speed, and you see how quickly he uses his hands to defeat the the defender. Um, stacks the guy, gives his quarterback enough room to the sideline to throw it. This is beautiful, man. Runs through the ball. It's actually underthrown. Probably should have been a touchdown uh, with a better throw here. But this is just an excellent rep. Yeah, that's crazy. This is him in that in the Chick Fil A college football playoff game against Georgia. And the, you got to remember this Georgia defense loaded with NFL talent. Like this is an NFL defense you're watching, one of the best we've ever seen in college football. And he had a day. 
Uh, he had a day. This is bailing coverage. Again, you see the quick twitch of his in and out of break at the top of these routes. You're not supposed to be 6'4", 215 with a 4'3", 40 and do this. You're not supposed to be able to change direction like that. It's and ridiculous. he does with ease. He's, he's truly is masterful in his route running. And uh, it's quarterback's best friend. Like, not only can he beat you just with uh, his raw athleticism that he has and his DNA, he's a technician. And that's that's why you know it's a safe bet to draft this dude. We've seen receivers that have all the raw talent. And sometimes it works out, but sometimes it doesn't. And very few receivers that we've seen in the NFL's history have it all. This is a guy that potentially has it all. Just ridiculous. Um, and like Mark said, like, I just think – like he's the most complete receiver in this draft. I think and Mark even like, you know, pulled up some stats here that we'll, we'll get into in a bit. Like this draft class is so loaded that like, yes, he Mar Marvin Harrison's going to be the first receiver off the board. 99.9% .9 chance. That's the case. With that being said, some of these other guys really aren't that far behind him and have just as much potential to be su successful in the NFL. I think the main thing here that not only this film shows, but we've really just seen over Marvin Harrison's career is just the completeness of a, a athlete that he is. He's incredibly fast. He's incredibly large. He's incredibly physical. He has great hands and he runs great routes. Like it's hard to find all of that in one receiver. It's, it's difficult to find, uh, you know, faults or, or issues with his game in general. While some of these other guys, like they might do think some things better than others. Um, but getting into one of these next guys who I think could be in contention to be 1A, 1B right there with Martin Harris. Call me crazy, John, but Malik he Davis. has solidified he's receiver one in this draft. There is no 1A, 1B. He is better than Marvin Harrison Jr. And I would have never imagined myself saying that. That's a bold take. All, all last year, all last year, Marvin Harrison Jr. in my mind was the clear-cut top prospect overall, clear-cut top receiver prospect. And I started diving into the film postseason after the college football season. And Malik Neighbors is this year's best receiver coming out. Um, and honestly, it's not really close. He separates himself in many different aspects from Marvin Harrison Jr. He's a little bit more fluent. He reminds me more of a Justin Jefferson style, which has become the more tough cover in the NFL, like the Tyree Kill the Justin Jefferson has been a little bit tougher to cover than just a guy that's like big and, and physical and, and kind of has like that raw athleticism. It'll always be a tough cover, but this is really becoming a problem in the NFL to try to deal with. And Malik neighbors, the similarities with him and, and Jay Jettas, it, it's crazy. Um, and when you get into the film, you'll start to see why, but John, he is my clear number one receiver in the draft. You can, if you want to pull up the stat comparison too, before I yeah, I'll do the film. that for you. Because it's not just the film. Like, obviously, numbers can lie. They played the same number of games. Uh, Malik Neighbors had 189 catches to Marvin Harrison Jr.'s 155, which can be obviously skewed because of targets and whatnot. Quarterback. He had 3,000 and he had 3,003 yards compared to Marvin Harrison's 2,600 yards. Harrison did have him in touchdowns. Harrison Jr. had 31 compared to Neighbors' 21. And they both averaged roughly 16 yards per completion. Marvin Harrison slightly edges there with 16.8. Um, so very similar, obviously, numbers-wise. But the yards and catches, pretty big change. And obviously, Marvin Harrison Jr. had more red zone targets and, and had more touchdowns over the course of his career. But Malik Neighbors was kind of late to the party, right? Like, we didn't really hear about Malik Neighbors until last year. So his, his touchdowns might not be as high. But he had a ridiculous year last year. He had better numbers in every category last year ahead of Marvin Harrison Jr. and did not win the Bolitnikoff. So there's obviously a little bit of bias towards Marvin Harrison, towards him because of that name. And I tell John this, and I, I'm warning people out there, if his name was something different, he wouldn't be the clear-cut number one. He'd still be a top-10 pick in this year's draft. Don't get me wrong. But you can still be overrated at where he is. It's not unfair to say that Malik Neighbors is a better receiver prospect. Um, and we'll get into why here into some film. Well, let's dig right into it because, again, I'm not saying outright that that uh, you know you're incorrect here, but a lot of people would disagree with you, and so a lot of people would disagree with me. But I, I disagree I also, with a lot of people, right? And that, but I also agree with the idea that okay, it could be because of the fact that everyone's been saying Marvin Harrison for like 
you know, two and a half, three years now. So I'm telling you, man, if his name was something, if these guys switched their names, Malik Neighbors would be like, the, it'd be like the craziest thing we've ever heard of talking about this guy as a prospect. Um, first thing about him, his Instagram name is literally can't guard Malik. So, <laughs> okay, got it. He's not wrong either because when you watch it, it, it he's he's tough. This is a this is a Big scramble Thomas sub fan. Yeah, well, let's hope he's not like Michael Thomas. Um, <laughs> this this first play is a scramble play. It's a broken play. He runs like a simple hitch route, and um, what really what's really stands out is his speed after the catch. So he catches this thing and crosses the field, which you really shouldn't do. And there's not, I don't think, another receiver in college football that would have gotten past all of those different defenders' angles. Now, this play, they ruled him stepping out of bounds, so it was not a touchdown. But you just see the speed and him outrunning all of these guys that practice this leverage where you're working on an angle. If you take an angle, you should be able to catch anybody because they all had a chance. Every single one of these defenders you watch on the film, if they take the right angle, will at least be able to catch up to him. But he outruns them all. And then he just barely steps out of bounds. Where, I was but gonna say, where does he step? Right there. They ruled him out at like the 25. Um really? But I'm like just look, at, look at the acceleration. Like he catches the ball and then he's full speed, like right away. He was not moving, catches the ball and outruns everybody that was moving. It's crazy. So it's he has freaky change of direction, freaky acceleration, and that's what stands out to me. And he can get out of his break. And he has the hands. Like he really does check every box, like Marvin Harrison Jr. does. It's just like he wasn't talked about as much. Right. You'll see a double move here. This is like a like a like a post and go route, fakes like a or I guess like a fake bang or slant route. But you see, he sells it with his eyes. He sells it with his pad level. His hips change direction. He's a technician too. Like he's not a raw like just a freak athlete guy. He has all of the coached, learned, practiced things in his back. This defender has no chance. Like he didn't beat that defender with speed. He beat him with technique, and that's the thing I really like because he can do both. Great that's route, crazy. runs through yeah, the catch. He's, he's comfortable he catching the ball. Out of that, dude. Sells, yes, yes. He's very, very good at making you think he's doing one thing and doing another, which is the art of the receiver position. Deception is the number one thing that really can separate you from other guys because a lot of these guys are equal in speed, size, height, you know, catching ability. A lot of them are pretty damn close. But it's deception that a lot of people struggle with and understanding what you need to do to get open. That's crazy. This this clip is one of my favorites because you see how good his start stop is, his release, uh, his acceleration, how good he gets out of the break, how quickly he accelerates after the catch. He can make people miss. He, I'm telling you, John, like this guy is a is a day one receiver one with whatever team he goes to. And if he is not the first receiver taken, someone's getting a steal. Gets the defender to open his hips, makes him think he's running by him, puts his feet in the ground, snaps out of it. He uses his hands really well in the top of his break here just to make sure that he stays open. He catches it confidently. It, it, this is this is what you dream of getting as a franchise receiver. It's crazy. This clip is not sped up. I want to repeat, it's not sped up. So this is just a slip route, okay? It's nothing about the route is impressive. Is he nothing about, it's, Watch him. Yeah, he goes in motion. Watch him catch this and watch how quickly he gets up the field. It's not sped up. It's ridiculous, man. It's ridiculous. Like... I watched this clip the first time I saw this, and I, I was just thinking it was just gonna be an average play, and he just smoked by everybody after catching this thing. Like the the acceleration to score here, I, I'd really, it's rare to see that in any player. That is insane. Now he's a little bit undersized compared to. Marv yes. and and uh, Rome, who we're going to get into, like obviously that's not the end all be all. We see plenty of of top line receivers. Where do you think like his fit is from a team perspective? Right, like say Cardinals, you know, grab grab Marv at four because that's where everybody's projecting him. Like, 
what teams need a receiver of his skill set the most? Like, you know, where he's maybe not like an X, he's not like the jump ball guy. He seems to be like incredibly speedy, great technique, able to change direction super easily. Uh, do you have anybody that comes to mind, like as far as some of those like top 10, top 15 drafting teams that you think are going to go for him? Um, I mean, every team would would thrive with a guy like this because um, neighbors, unlike some of these other bigger targets, um, he can play both inside, outside. He could play the X or Z. He could play a slot. He can go in motion and run routes. You know, he, you can give him the ball on handoffs. Like we've, like he has plenty of times where he gets the ball on a handoff and, and does something impressive with the ball in his hands. So he's just a special athlete. I really think, honestly, I think the Chargers would be a great fit for him. Um, you know, they lost Keenan Allen. They lost Mike Williams. Quentin Johnson really, you know, not wasn't what you thought he'd be, <laughs> yeah. but it, it, but even if he starts to figure it out a little bit, he can be like your ex jump ball guy and neighbors right. can be like, you know, he can be the next coming of what Keenan Allen was, but he's got more speed and change of direction acceleration than Keenan Allen ever had. So, you know, I think that's a good fit because Justin Herbert needs a receiver, one guy that he can go Bad. to and that, a guy that can get open all the time. The Chargers are in a really interesting spot at five because I think all of their positions that need, they they'd benefit more trading back. Um, and there's going to be some quarterback needy teams trying to get in at five, I think. So, yeah, I'm, I'm I mean, curious. he's a, this is a tough dude to pass on John. I'll be honest with you. Um, I, I would not be shocked to see someone take him ahead of Marvin Harrison jr. Just depends on the team. Yeah, sure. Um, next guy who like is one of my favorites too. I mean, and again, like I think most likely on draft day, it's, it's, uh, Marvin Davers and Odunze are the top three taken off the board in that order. But, you know, plenty of draft day surprises. Um, Mark, I'll let you get into it. He's, I think he's the biggest of these guys too, right? He's like, six he's five. up there. Yeah, I think he's but... the biggest, uh, very close, similar to Marvin Harrison Jr. Doesn't have the same speed as Harrison Jr., but he's a big physical receiver who can run routes, can get in. A, he runs routes like he's like Julian Edelman's size but he's six, four. Um, mm -hmm. and those guys are freaky. They're hard to find. This first clip is just a, it's a snag route for where you fake the slant and you come on an out route. It's the deception that I talked about with neighbors. It's the, it's the eye snap. It's everything looks like it's going to be a slant. And then he just snaps his hips down where, which allows him to get out of the break really, really quick. It's technique Crazy. stuff. This is coached. This is learned. This is mastered. It's not stuff that he was just born doing. He learned it. Uh, very well coached. Washington's produced some very good receivers. Uh, they obviously had an outstanding year last year. He was a big part of the reason why. And he's just a really tough cover in every aspect of it. Um, but this is really, really a great route to start off. Here's more deception. I mean, this is what was one of the best routes last year. Um, he, he just does a rocker step, but the rocker step isn't what sells it. It's the head, right? The, head. the eye, yeah, the eyes right. snapping in and that defender starts to look for the slant ball. And by the time he recovers, it's a touchdown. He, this guy, Rome was a touchdown machine. Uh, quarterback's best friend because of the size, because of the ability to have late hands. Um, doesn't matter, man. He catches the ball if, if it comes anywhere near him. Crazy. I mean, his routes are just insane. It's more deception, right? Um, it's my number one thing I look at because it's such a rare thing to find in receivers. And uh, yeah, he's oh just God. he doesn't he, he sells the, the stop <laughs> route. He like he like literally stops. Looks like he's waiting for a ball that isn't coming, and then just that's so goes. crazy. The biggest thing, John, is the um, obviously the eyes, right? The eyes are the biggest thing, but his his hips. He changes. You see how low, how his hips sink when he breaks. Yeah, that's what sells it. That's what sells it. It's crazy. The eyes lie. You know what? Don't. What did Shakira say, John? Hips don't lie. The hips don't lie. But his are lying. Effectively, his are lying, <laughs> and that's why it, that's why people get beat by five yards like that. Because as a DB, I mean, yeah. you're taught that the hips don't lie. Oh my gosh, that's insane. But he's so good at what he does. Um, it, it's just he's a tough he's a tough cover. Really, really good here. Um, a lot of times you want to see how do receivers react to off coverage, late contact. 
So this defender is trying to get his hands on him down the field at about seven yards just to throw you off, to throw the timing off. The, be- the very best receivers are able to elude these people without throwing off the timing of the play. So he just, within the regular timing of this route, avoids the contact, uses his hands to swipe the guy off, and then still gets into his break so that Penix can get him the ball when it needs to be thrown. Because if he doesn't do this and Penix throws it late, it's an incompletion or a pick. And if he forces Penix to hold the ball longer because he didn't get open in the route, it's a sack, which is why defenses do this. Um, It takes special receivers to be able to have that not phase them. This is a hard thing to do. Second level, beating contact at second level is a hard thing to do. And he does it with ease. Makes it look so easy. Yeah, yeah. he's he's incredible. Um, you know, I've watched a decent chunk of film on him too. And I mean, I think these are just such great highlights of his route running ability. It's it's elite. Um again, I mean, an, another guy that I think is gonna probably like I think all three of these guys are gonna be gone by pick ten. Like I Early. think that's the most likely. Yeah, and we but you know what? We thought the same thing last year and we saw receivers drop. What I think might happen, John, is because of the quarterback talent we have in this draft, you could see teams start moving up, trading back, so that quarterbacks go early. And these yeah. receivers might get pushed back later than you think. Well, that's kind of what I think is going to happen, but I think it's going to – like, I don't know. I know everybody kind of assumes this, but I think this year more than ever it's more likely where, like, you're going to have a quarterback gold rush in the first five picks. Like, I think, I think four of the first five picks will be quarterbacks. And then the five picks after that, I think is immediately going to pivot to tackles and receivers, right? And like, that's just all it's going to be all the top guys. Cause like, look, edge, obviously you, you know, you have Dallas Turner and you have some other guys that that definitely are, are talented, but nobody's like literally jumping up the board to try to get some of those guys. I could 100% see somebody jumping up the board to go get, you know, a JJ McCarthy, jumping up the board to get a Joe Alt, jumping up the board to get any of these receivers that we just talked about any day of the week. And I think that, right, it's like, it's like, where's your demand at versus all of these other teams that really causes those runs on certain positions to happen very quickly? Um, and I don't know. I mean, I feel like this draft and this receiver class has that written all over it. And same thing with quarterback, frankly. Yeah. Um, all right, Adam I Mitchell. Again, yeah, another big getting... guy, six four guy, like a lo- lot of like large body, like X type receivers out of this class. I feel like, yeah, for sure. Um, pro- the thing with him though, John, is again, it's it, it's these big receivers, it, but they can run. Right, this guy's a four three five guy at the combine this year. Um, he's another guy that's got the deception at his size. This I is like a guy the, that can go wording on this one. Flat out scoot. <laughs> is that yeah, the original? He can flat out scoot. <laughs> flat out scoot. Um, he's, 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 yeah, he's fast. He, he can take a top off the of defense. He can catch a, a 50, 50 ball. You'd throw one up to him. He can get open in and out of his breaks on intermediate routes. Uh, this is against Alabama. I mean, this is a Nick Saban coach defense. This is a guy bailing, uh, and he just goes right through the corner who tries to have late contact, you know, down the field at about 10 yards and he avoids it with ease and runs right by it. The safety doesn't, the safety bites on the dig route. Doesn't take the t- uh, go go to his deep fourth of the field this is just like a quarters look defense and he runs and makes him pay and runs through the ball and makes a nice catch i do think there's comparisons to this guy uh when it when it comes to like player cop with cd lamb um i don't think he's as twitchy per se as cd lamb but he is very 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 good and uh the similarities down the field, like late in the routes are, are where I see the similarities, like how he catches the ball, how he deals with off coverage, how he manipulates guys like this right here, like 20 yards down the field, that little stutter step. Wow. That's, that's tough to, that's tough to execute and not right. slow down a ton. And he still gets this ball. A little rocker step right here. It's, it's hard to do that on a post route. Right. And yet he pulls it off and then still makes a Crazy. catch. You can see Texas isolated him a lot, right? They right. use him as that like X, you know, that single receiver a lot in space. This is, I mean, this is beautiful release work here. I want you to see how he squares up the defender, right? Right in the center of the defender's chest, right? Right in his, right in his belt line. He squares him up, 
gives him a two-way go. He could go on the fade. He could go on the slant. And um, he does a great job of crossing face here and making it look like he's going deep and beating him inside with ease and giving the quarterback the easiest throw he'll ever have. And you can see the burst he has out of it. Oh, this one's crazy. This is one thing you always got to look at with these 6'4", six, 6'5", six, receiver targets. Are they confident with their hands? Do they have the ability to jump at high point? Because it doesn't matter if you're 6'5", if you're waiting for the ball to come down. Because you ain't 6'5", if a 6-foot defensive back can jump and get to your height. You got to be 6'5", and jump to 7-foot, right? And that's what these guys do. They jump, they got long arms, and they got strong hands. So now a 6'5 guy plays like he's 7-foot, and these defenders don't stand a chance if the ball is thrown right. Most of these quarterbacks in the NFL can throw these balls pretty consistently. Matchup nightmare. Pie points it, turns his body away from the defender so that the defender can't get his arms inside of the ball, and then tucks it so that the ball won't hit the ground and pop out late. Damn. Really, really good job all around on that rep. Yeah, he's a stud. Um, and so I've seen, and I'm curious to hear, because you're talking about big receivers that are really confident in their hands, really good at, you know, these, these jump balls that you got to reach for put, putting the balls in a place that only they can go get them right. Giving mm-hmm. them that kind of advantage. Keon Coleman's a guy that I've seen kind of go up and down a bunch of people's draft boards a lot of the time. Um, because I think they're less confident in his hands ability um, to get some of those 50, 50 balls. And there's, Arguments will for and against that that the film shows. So I think right, it's not it's not like coming out of nowhere. Um, but I'm just curious what your take is on Keon Coleman because I've seen him do some of the most ridiculous stuff that any receiver did all season. I've also seen him drop some passes that he 100 should catch. So where where does he stand versus some of these other you know big framed like X receiver type guys? Keon Coleman is this year's biggest boomer bust draft guy at this position like and it's not even close this guy could be the best receiver in this draft like he's got the talent to do that but he could also be more of a bust type guy um a guy that could maybe fall later in the draft kind of like what like donald people's jones was out of michigan like he was a sixth round draft pick he's never really been a star in the Mm -hmm. nfl but he's been like a good receiver he's been a receiver one for some for some years in cleveland and then he's had some down years that's kind of where I see like he and Coleman and his like coming out of the, the college world. Very similar. Obviously started his career at Michigan state transfers to Florida state. This guy flat out is like, he's the best athlete in this draft, John, this guy could go start and play basketball at Florida state. He played basketball at Michigan state. He was a top five team in the country. Like this guy's a freak. He's about to play in the NFL, but he also could have started at almost every divisional basketball program in the country. He is a really, really good athlete. Um, this first clip is probably the best play I've seen on film yeah, from I, any I player this year. I saw live, I'm pretty sure, um, which is exactly where I was like, holy shit, like, why is he not the number one receiver? This, this is flat out, like, and, the, and you're going to see, like, the highs, right, with Keon Coleman because these are all the highs of what he can do. And there's definitely some some concerns with some basic catches that he should have that he doesn't pull in and, and stuff like that. And I get why there's some hesitancy with it. But if you're <laughs> – 6'4", 220, can catch the ball, make a guy miss like that. That juke move is ridiculous. And then just flat out hurdle a dude while you're jogging up the sideline and the guy sees you coming from 10 yards away. The guy barely ducked his head. I mean, normally you go low to tackle a big receiver like this, but he could have jumped if the dude stood straight up. It's ridiculous. I think I think we've for for some reason we've looked at this play before on the podcast. Yeah, my favorite it was part, ridiculous. Right. My favorite part about it is that you can just tell that he he consciously makes the decision to hurdle this dude like yards in advance. Like it's right like, here. It's like right, right here. He knows yeah. he's gonna he knows. It. He's like, I just made that dude look silly. I'm about to literally <laughs> expose this team. And he almost scores. It's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, definitely one of my favorite plays of all of last season. Um, so if you have any questions about who's the best athlete in this year's draft, you pull up that clip and that clip alone, and there's no more debate. He's the best athlete in this class. Now, best, best athlete doesn't always mean best receiver or best player, but it has the potential to be. Um, 
he also makes catches like this, which the 50-50 thing with Keon Coleman, I actually think that he's he's up there with Rome um, as being the best 50-50 guys in this draft. Him, Marvin, Rome, I think are the best guys that just throw the ball up and go get it. I really do. This, this is a one-handed catch um, over the middle. Again, airborne, goes up and gets it. Probably could have got two hands on the football, but – you know, if you can do this, why? You're not you're, as a coach. You're never going to yell at him until he drops it. But this is partially probably why he has some drop issues because he should be catching this ball with two hands. Right. Although on film it looks exciting and it's obviously fans love it, but as a coach, you're like, dude, put two hands on the ball, catch the ball. This shows you a little bit of his intermediate game, right? Everyone thinks he's just a 50-50 throw the ball up because he's a basketball player and. You know, everyone has a weird thing about him, but this is him catching a slant and then making a safety in open field look like he's never tackled before against LSU, right? Like an SEC team. Um, he jumped in from Michigan State, immediate impact, like immediate star. This first, this was the first game of the year. He had, I think, three touchdowns. He was in the Heisman conversation for the first few weeks of the season. Um, he's He's special. There's no doubt about it. He's special. And if you're someone who thinks that his stock should go down, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't, I can't get behind that. I just can't. He's got first round talent, probably won't go in the first round be, just because of the depth of the position and because of how many quarterbacks receivers are going to go in the first round. But this is a first round talent. Someone's going to get a steal in the second round. This is the 50 50 ball you talked about, John. There's no better example in a 50 50 ball than when both guys get their hand on the ball. Both guys have their hands on this ball, and he pulls it away from him. While this, while, while this defender is trying to swipe and rip the ball out of his hands, he pulls it away from him. He's got strong hands. He's got strong grip. He can go get it. Obviously, he can jump. He can deal with people pulling the jersey and hold them all day because he's big and strong. He, he's a really, really good talent. Oh, Another yeah. jump ball, because why not? Yeah, easy, right? Back shoulder makes, makes it look easy. easy. Yeah. And he did this stuff at Michigan State. It just wasn't on as big of a national stage because Michigan State at the time wasn't very good. But he did this stuff at Michigan State, and the right coaches saw it. And when he put his name in the portal, he was very sought after, and Florida State got a gem. And then the NFL is going to get a gem. Whatever team gets this dude is getting a very, very good player. This is an overtime. Throw it up to him. I, I don't know where the 50-50 rumors are coming from. Like Almost every time I saw a big moment where they need a big play, and your offense isn't clicking, and you got to just put it up for somebody. He came down with it almost every time. So he's got a clutch factor to him as well. Like you said, That's at Clemson. Right. That's at Clemson. You, you know, crowd is, crowd is booing you. Yeah, hopefully my brother watched that happen in person. So this is some of the stuff at Michigan State. Uh, I think just a couple clips of the Michigan State stuff, but – like I said, he was doing this long before. Yeah, that's a crazy you know, catch. That's ridiculous. The way he twists his body there to bring that he in. Torx is, he's a great athlete at his size, man. And he, and he does have competent hands. Um, he could use some work in just the flat-out release game. Like, he needs to be quicker off the release, more competent with using his hands to fight off the press coverage. But again, when you're that size and you're that strong, you can get away with not being as technically sound at beating press because you can just – Use your strength to get open, and then you can do this at the point of con at the point of catch. It's crazy. One more for you. Yeah, it's a trick play. Um, receiver throws it up to him. The safety's there to pick it off, and he just goes up and takes it from the safety. The safety should have picked this ball, but because. Because he attacks the ball in the air. Oh when gosh. I talk, I, you're going to hear me say repetitive things for some of these bigger receivers. He attacks this thing. He plucks this thing out of the air, and it's it's once it's thrown, it's his. That's got to be the mentality for these bigger receivers, and a lot of them don't have that. Mm -hmm. He does. Yeah, that's nuts. 
I mean, like I said, like, I mean, he, he came out so hot to start the season and now I'm hearing all this like doubt trickle in as, and as draft stock, you know, respectively dropping as a result. I don't, I, I don't know if I totally buy it, man. Um, you, now, you want to talk about it. You want to talk about teams that are looking for a X receiver. The Detroit Lions are looking for an X receiver. Adonai Mitchell a, or Keon Coleman, man. I'd love either one of those dudes. They have a later draft pick, and yep. I do think Keon will be there. I don't know about Mitchell. I don't know about some of these other receivers we've talked about. I do think Keon will be there, and I really do like the fit. Um, that's just something something I'm putting out there. No, I'm, I'm big, look, we shored up a lot of our needs, uh, assuming Cam Sutton isn't in prison, I guess, um, <laughs> coming up on this season. Um, and truly they're in a position to draft the best player available. And I think that's all Brad Holmes has really done anyways, for the most part, just the fact that there's truly no pressure. Like, let's just go get some athletes that we like. I'm, I'm really excited about that. It's a line spin. All right. Um, one thing I'm not excited about is the concept that this guy might fall far enough to potentially go to the dolphins. Um, or the chiefs. That's, that's the, the chiefs. two. Those are the, the two, two teams. Spots. It wouldn't be fun to see him uh, uh, running with, but it is Here, here's the thing with Xavier Worthy. And if you are one of those people that say, okay, whatever, he ran a, the fastest 40 time in history, doesn't mean he's going to be good in the NFL. I agree with those people almost always. The 40 yard dash, we you, will talk you about. You are the forever. 40 yard dash combine hater. hater. Top of it the is the dumbest yep. thing ever. It doesn't matter. But when the film matches what you did in the combine. He is fast as shit on a football field as well. Okay. It's not just a track straight line speed. He has quickness. He has hands route, route running ability, and his speed translates to the sport of football. Not always does that happen. When John Ross got drafted high because he ran this four, two, four forty, it didn't translate to the, to the NFL because there were signs in college on his film it wouldn't translate. Xavier Worthy is different. He can play slot. He can play out wide. He can catch 50-50 balls. He can get open on intermediate routes. He can take the top off a of defense like a JMO or Tyreek Hill does. He can do it all, and he's freaky, freaky fast, dude. So, I mean, I he's exciting to watch. Let's get in the film because it's like a video game character that you can create. <laughs> not, even a, not even a juke here. Not even a juke, just flat out just out bad up. angle because <laughs> and, and and you see these bad angles from guys because you don't expect him to be that fast. No matter how much you prepare, you can't emulate that kind of speed because very, very few few, few players have it. So well, is when a four you get two into, one was his official forty, his, right? There's a four two three, I believe. Four two three. No, four two one. It was a four two one. Yeah, yeah, that's four, ridiculous. Two, one, which is which is crazy. Yeah, four two one. I mean, that's just insane. Yeah. So he, I mean, he is he's just special, man, and it translates to the football field. You can see it here. So second clip here. Um, this is him yeah, running. I mean, great route. <laughs> this I mean, is him running it. John John's not like a receiver guy; he's a lineman guy, and even even him in this situation. I mean, it's just, it's the, like, it doesn't matter what your specialization is. Like you see an athlete be able to just stop on a dime and, and pivot like that in the middle of his route running as fast as he is. Like, you you don't, right. Like normal humans can't do this. What he just does. There. That's so ridiculous. I mean, that poor DB, like literally is, is still, by the time he's running in the other direction, this DB is still looking the other way and has to like totally flip around to try to match him. I mean, it's, it's not even, it's like the other dudes going in a totally different, like dimension as him from a speed perspective. It's ridiculous. Pulling up another play here. Yeah, so again, you just you just see the, the, the he's got great stop start, you know, and it's he gets so fast so quickly, and then he gets out of it so quickly. As a defender, you're scared because he can run by you at any time, 
and rightfully so. And but but when he puts his feet in the ground and you see that head snap down and he's and he just stops and he goes a different direction, how do you recover? Because you're not fast enough to catch up to him, but he's also quicker than you. And that's a rare, rare thing. It's crazy. ridiculous so here you got um you know the deception right the head fake we talked about it with his teammate mitchell we talked about it with rome um it's this head fake is what gets him open here not his speed and so you want to talk about well he's just fast the release is great he stacks his defender he sells the post gets out of it to the corner runs through the ball for a touchdown so he checks all of the technique that you look for on this play he checks every box and then it just so happens that he's the fastest player we've ever seen that's preparing for the NFL. Oh my God. Just an example of, you know, just an exa another a great route, um, a great throw. And then when you, when you want to try to undercut this dude, you better be damn sure that you're getting to the ball or tackling him because he's gonna outrun everybody else. If you're not, if you're not, if you're the last line of defense, nobody's catching him. <laughs> so, yes, when you when you start to talk about teams like Miami, Kansas City, and you talk about the fit that he would be when you throw him in there, he's not necessarily going to be a receiver one for any team. But because of what he does here, like he's going to be similar to like what JMO has done for the Lions, uh, right. except I think he catches the ball better than JMO. Right. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, it's, it's the the fastest show on turf with with Miami. Like he doesn't need to be wide receiver one because they have uh, Tyreek and Achan and Moster that are also all like you know four, whatever four three guys that that it's fast like, and quick. That's <laughs> a very dangerous combination, and I yeah I don't know how you I don't know how you deal with that. Uh, I got a couple more here for you. Very similar route to the last one we watched, but you just see how good he is when he when he when he makes that cut at the top of his route, and then he accelerates out of it with that four two one speed. This defender actually plays it decent, but it looks bad on film because of how quick this dude is. I mean, that's nuts. Any other receiver, I think this defender is recovering and, and making the breakup, but you're not catching up to him if. You basically have to guess where he's going and beat him to the spot. Because if you guessed right, you might have a chance. You probably are going to guess wrong, though. And when you do, he's going to toast you. Same thing here. That post, that little post corner out where he just makes you think he's going inside, goes outside. Quarterback gives him a chance. He goes up and get. He goes up and gets it. A little bit of 50 50 skill that he has in his toolbox that a lot he's because he is a little bit undersized um and he, and he is a little bit fragile right with how thin he is but we've seen that become less and less important in the nfl the speed is what kills <laughs> running through that catch tracking this ball in the air 60 yards in the air like it was is yeah. not easy no and how many times have we seen mvs tyreek hill Right, smoke Drop someone these. and then not bring that in. Yeah, exactly. How many times we've we seen JMO run right by somebody? Goff throws a dime, and he doesn't catch it. Xavier Worthy's not going to have that problem. Holy, <laughs> yeah. I mean, what the, the hell? The, the acceleration. Obviously, he has to change of direction, but he's a ball player. Like he's he has jukes. He has the ability. He's like he's not afraid to be special with the ball in, in his hands. And and a lot of these speedy guys just catch and go out of bounds. Runs right through the ball. Runs right through the ball again. You see how comfortable he is making those over-the-shoulder catches. And then one thing that separates him from pretty much all these other main prospects I looked at at the receiver position, special I suppose teamer. some of them could do it, but special teamer, right? Punt returns are still very much 
a factor in today's game. Kickoff yeah, or they so said much. six or seven punt return touchdowns last season. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Kick returns are kind of dying, but punt right. returns are still very much game changing. And he can flip fields. And not only can he flip fields, but he can score on any time he touches the ball because look at the change of direction and look at him go. Punter's got no chance. <laughs> Poor punter. Punter's got no chance. There's never been a time in history where the punter is on the screen and then off the screen faster. There he is. <laughs> now he's gone. <laughs> oh, he's man, gifted, man. Ridiculous. He's gifted. He's a really, really exciting prospect. Um, obviously, his stock flew up with the 40 he ran. And, uh, you know, rightfully so. But, again, a lot of teams look way too much into that. Like I said, when the 40 tests and how everybody looks at the combine matches what your film does, that's where you're just like, okay, extra box checked. The only time you should ever be concerned is if someone looks really, really good on film and then does just terribly at the combine. I guess you can kind of start to ask questions. But if both are good, prospect is good. Yeah. If the combine's good and the film isn't good, do not draft that dude. But so many guys, so many teams do, and that's where you make the mistake. You're not going to make the mistake with this guy. Um, and there are plenty of other receivers, obviously, to talk about. I'll cover a few of them. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't. I didn't bring up film for all these guys, but Brian Thomas out of LSU, big physical receiver, might go higher than a lot of the guys we just talked about. He could be. He could be the fourth or fifth receiver taken. Him and neighbors were deadly together um at lsu and and he's another guy that is that x receiver that has the speed and that's going to be a problem in the nfl uh lad mcconkey is an interesting one right um anytime you bring up the white receiver all of a sudden people get all well i don't know right because it's such a rare thing to see uh lad mcconkey is is a really good receiver out of his break he's undersized he's got strong hands played at probably one of the best schools you can play at in the last four years in college football he's a national champ um Definitely someone to look at. I think he could be a good slot receiver, probably a third or fourth rounder. Javon Baker, another bigger receiver. And there's a lot of those X receivers that John likes to talk about in this year's draft from UCF. He's another threat guy. It reminds me a lot of like an AJ Green kind of guy. Um, Jermaine Burton is one of the more athletic receivers in this draft that people forget about. This guy started at Alabama, transferred to Georgia, was very, very productive. Um, Actually, I'm sorry, started started at Bama. Yeah, started at Bama. No, started at Georgia, switched to Bama. I th yeah. think the latter. I think he switched. I think he switched to Bama. Let me see. Yes, yes. He started at Georgia, switched to switched Bama. Switched to Bama. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Um, I've watched so much film of him from both from both spots. Uh he thrived at both schools. So he played with a lot of different quarterbacks. He did very well at the combine in terms of athleticism. This is this is a guy that's that's sneaky. He interviewed well. He's really, really smart. Um, he's a guy that will be slept on, probably a second or third round pick that some team's going to be very, very lucky to get. And then Xavier Leggett from South Carolina is right up there, I think, at the third or fourth of those six, four big receivers in this draft. And there's plenty of them, right? There's plenty mm -hmm. of those guys in this year's draft. But this guy is right up there with the best of them in terms of the big, strong, go get it guy. Uh, not as great in and out of the break as some of these other guys we've seen. But if you need a 50-50 ball guy, you need a guy that you can just play like T. Higgins, that's the guy that you're looking for. Uh, what's your thought on Roman Wilson as well? Roman Wilson, uh, very similar to Lad McConkey in terms of how he plays. Very, very fast. Uh, he's got consistent hands, pretty good route runner. I don't think Roman Wilson is going to be a great NFL receiver. I just think that he's undersized. I don't know how great he's going to block at the next level. Um, I don't think that speed that he got away with in, in college is going to help him get open as easily. The system he was in at Michigan really benefited him because he was truly like the only receiver they tried to target a lot of the time. Right. And uh, because of their running game, he, he got really favorable matchups a lot of the time. He'll be okay. You know, fifth rounder, sixth rounder, in my opinion, yeah. I, anything higher than that, you're probably reaching. Yeah. I, I assume as much as I was curious what your take on him was. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, so that's our receiver recap. Uh, for those who are just tuning in for the first time, we have already looked at quarterbacks. We've flipped those up by the quarterback prospect. We've already looked at offensive linemen. We're in the process of clipping those up by we, each lineman that we take a look at. 
Now here we are with receivers. Um, you know, I think as far as other position groups that we might focus on, like, you know, might take a look at edge rusher, um, a little bit, um, you know, might take a look at defensive back a little bit. I don't know if we're going to do one of these episodes for each position group. Um, but you know, we want to knock out these three for sure, because a quarterback offensive line receiver, like I said, very deep at, um, each of these positions, it's going to be really exciting to see kind of how these guys fly off the board on draft day, because, um, it's, it's a really special draft class, honestly. This, personally, like what? This is year three or four, I think, of Mark and I like really being super in tune to what's going on in the NFL draft. Um, last year's was really exciting to me. I think I might be more excited about this year's just because of the, the talent that's available at each position group. Haven't had a whole lot of quarterbacks. Haven't had a, like, you know, a crazy amount of offensive linemen. Um, these past few seasons, uh, this season's an exception at both those positions. And then obviously, like I said, loaded receiver class. So, uh, appreciate everybody tuning in and, uh, we will see you guys next week. Mark, any last comments from you? Malik neighbors, receiver one. You heard it here. You heard it here first from Mark Petrito stamping his approval on it. Former central Michigan wide receiver saying, Hey, neighbors is the guy. Uh, no knock on Marvin Harrison either, but neighbors is special. It is what it is, man. Yeah, yeah nothing against him, but neighbors is it's different. Love it. All right, we'll see you guys next week. Peace. See you guys.